Welcome Black Hollywood Live fans. On today's episode of Fit Club, we talk the Netflix documentary, What the Health. Stay tuned for more. You're tuned into Black Hollywood Live, Fit Club. Hey. This is a good show, so we had to put a great warm-up song, get us in the mood to talk about what the hell. Thank you for tuning in. I am your host, Fallon Mercedes. You can find me online at fitwithfallon.com or on social media at fitwithfallon. And Shaka, where can they find you? You guys can find me on Twitter, Instagram, and Snapchat. It's Shaka Strong. And you know these moves. You grew yeah, up in Miami, of course, right? Of course. Hey. You gotta, this, this is the, the music you dance to when you find out the truth. You're yes. Like, okay, you know what? I gotta put on something. Let me celebrate. And we are finding out the truth today. Yeah. Hold Hopefully, you all have watched the documentary, What the Health. Um, Shaka and I kind of told you last week that today we will be doing a full review on the recap. Yeah. Now, this is a documentary that is waking up Americans all over the place. And I feel like there really has been a kind of a vegan revolution going on. Yeah. But I think this documentary is really going to put it on the map. I've been seeing people tweet about it, hashtag it, post about it. I mean, yesterday, you know, I kind of wanted to, you know, um, get under, not get under people's, um, what would you say? Yeah, well, I mean, sometimes, it, when you know when you're gonna tell the truth, it's gonna affect people yes. like, in their heart and their core. You yeah, know? So, so I just put up some stats and I said, hey, we'll be discussing this today. I didn't say, you know, anything else <laughs> and people went crazy in the comments yeah. like crazy like all night like they were still going yeah. at it and I was like wow this is definitely something that we should talk about so shout out to everybody who uh, went off on the comments yeah. uh, good or bad uh, it still you know brought something up inside of you and if you want to talk to us about it while we're doing the show I have right here in front of me um, the live chat going on and we'll ask our engineers as well can you guys can you put it on the big screen so we could see so if you guys want to ask us any questions or maybe just give us your or viewpoint comment, or, comments yeah, yeah what you guys thought about the documentary we will be responding live okay so just to let you know a little bit about this documentary uh, filmmaker Kip Anderson who is known for Cowspiracy um, and other documentaries um, that he has done that has kind of woken people up as well um, he has uncovered the secrets to preventing and reversing chronic diseases and he investigates in the this documentary why the nation's leading health organizations do not want people to know about it um, have you watched his other documentary docu documentaries yeah, I, I saw Cowspiracy a long time ago so mm -hmm. I didn't really remember it and when I saw it um, I don't think I was vegan yet oh. so yeah I don't think it kind of uh, and I, I, I think that one didn't hit me the same way this one hit mm -hmm. me because this one was really about how we're believing something because of the industry, the way the industry is really paying, mm -hmm. paying it, paying for us to believe it. Mm -hmm. And I think you know a lot of times we talk about being vegan or going vegan, yeah. it tends to be more of a personal choice. Yeah. And this felt like, wait, have I been assaulted my entire life by like corporations? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I remember if you, any of you, have read the book The Calorie Myth, and in that book, it kind of broke down some of the things that this documentary did in terms of. Uh, the government, um, you know, who are being funded by, you know, national food corporations, and it lists, kind of like in the movie, you know, that here they're giving us this food pyramid and these guidelines of what to eat, what is healthy, we need so much dairy, we need so much mm -hmm. meat. But yet, all of these big companies are paying, you know, Nestle and um, Coca-Cola well, yeah. and, you know, Con they're the food, ones yeah. who are really controlling, you know, what we're eating. And, so, and I was a pretty smart kid and when I saw that food pyramid, I just took it for word. I took it yeah. as gold. Like, this is the way I should be eating. Being a trainer too, um, you know, I deal with a lot of women who have osteoporosis, especially in women because we have um, a higher rate of it. and all of the women who come into me always say, I don't understand, I've been drinking milk all my life. Yeah. And, you know, I'll be honest, years and years ago, I went along with it. You were like, drink more. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. keep, you know, keep strength training, yeah. keep working out and drink your milk. And yeah. this 
this affected me not only as you know a, a person but also a professional yeah so it was very riveting and eye-opening and um if you haven't watched it listen to what we're talking about but i want you to go watch it afterwards to get your own um thoughts on it and then you can sound off in the comments or tweet at us and let us know what you think yeah do we have that chat up i don't know we have the Let me see if I can find it on my phone. Um, but yeah. Oh, there we go. So uh, Perfect. what Perfect. I also, okay, we got it going. <laughs> uh, what I also saw too, um, after I watched the documentary, I didn't want to just watch it and nothing else. So I also went on to YouTube and uh, did a little post yeah, and, <laughs> and, and wanted to see what other people who were debunking it had to say. Yeah. And there was this doctor, um, they call him, I think, Dr. Zebo or um, Z-Dog. Uh -huh. And he had a lot to say too, but first let's jump into it. Yeah. Um, let's, I guess, go into the facts. Uh, we have a fact sheet that we'll pull up and we'll dive into each of the facts. But worldwide, we are looking at approximately 350 million people with diabetes. Now this is, all these facts are statements that are said in the documentary. Yeah. So um, with that being said, there is an epidemic of diabetes. Yeah, we knew that, but what was so remarkable about this documentary, it showed you why it was caused. I have always believed too much sugar is going to lead to diabetes. And I've been told that my entire life, history of diabetes on my father's side, yeah. so always watch your sugar intake, watch your sodium intake, and come to find out that it really has to do with the meat that we're eating. Yeah. Or even carbs. Yeah. I always thought, you know, the more carbs you eat, it does affect your There's more sugars, your, yeah. gli your glycose levels, yeah. um, glycogen levels. And it makes sense now that when I think about it, because when I think of, you know, the Asian community, people who come from Asia, yeah who eat tons of rice and typically Asians are thin. Yeah. And um, I had one girl yesterday who came in to train with me and uh, she's Asian American. She just, uh, I guess, become a, became a citizen uh, recently. She got here three years ago from Japan and um, she is 30 pounds overweight. And she was like, this never happened to me when I was in Asia yeah. or even Indians. Yeah. Um, or even, you know, when I go to the Dominican Republic, uh, to see my family, my country, you know, we are curvy, but I see it go to obesity and severe obesity once my family starts coming to the States. Yeah. And I know it has to do with the food and we were all eating rice and beans over there. So what is the difference? And it's what they put in the food and especially the meat. Yeah. And that it, it, it's crazy. What is it? Two out of three adults are overweight or obese. Two out of three. Two out of three. And so it goes to show you there's a problem. It's not just mm -hmm. humans' minds changing yeah. about the way we eat. There's a systemic problem. Yeah, and even if you take my body fat percentage, I'm ashamed to say it, but it is a little high. And, you know, after I did Dr. Shamika's cleanse, mm -hmm. which I was raw vegan and then vegan and then vegetarian, I did drop in weight and body fat percentage. And, again, it opened my eyes to realize I, d I didn't even work out. Oh, yeah. on the cleanse yeah. didn't work out right now I work out every day five days a week maybe six and you know when you just focus on the nutrition and the food yeah. you see a huge difference and they say you can't out outwork a bad diet yeah. that's for a reason it's absolutely true and that we, you see in the documentary there were some people that were suffering they had been taking so many drugs and you know were overweight and within a couple of days they were off a lot of the drugs in a couple of weeks their body <coughs> body fat decreased significantly yeah um there is i gotta think of the name there is this doctor who wrote a book um i'll think of it but i'll explain it basically people who have cancer uh, what he writes in his book is just to juice yeah. and cleanse. Is this Sebi? And Dr. Sebi? No, not Sebi. Uh, okay. He's good too, yeah. but it was another one from Europe. Um, he passed away. But that was one of the things. Um, he also suggested colon cleanses to clean the colon, probably because all the food that we're eating, yeah. all the meats, and then just to juice because a lot of us can be obese, but we're starving on a cellular level. Yeah. And, and it's the cholesterol and all the meat that's not letting us get us not letting us get the vitamins and nutrients that we need to get to our cells to feed us on a cellular level. Yeah, and I say even better than juicing, it's like blending, blending the whole fruit mm -hmm. because we're, we know that we're not getting enough fiber. Yeah. 
So I actually don't have a juicer, so I blend everything. <laughs> but to me, that's juicing because yeah. I don't have a juicer. Um, just some other stats. Uh, one out of three Medicare dollars is spent on people with diabetes. Yeah, so there's really no incentive for the community to get people to prevent having diabetes. They want you to live with diabetes mm -hmm. and live long and continue to take medication for it. And like Dr. Shamika, who's a friend of ours on the show, when she was here, she told us, and the documentary backed it up, stating that doctors in med school and even when they're out of med school only have to do seven hours of nutrition class oh, no, that they were recommending that they fought against it yeah yeah, yeah they, that's they, what i'm saying yeah. like they they it's it's incredible yeah. how there needs to be more preventative um, education to physicians and nurses and people in the health field instead of just but I think, you know, the, pharma the pharmacy comp companies or pharmaceutical companies, I think they're the ones who are probably giving these medical schools money to... Yeah, and the, and the doctors themselves, because these doctors that are part of these associations are testifying uh, that th it's too onerous for them to do seven hours of nutritional training. Which seven, is hours. Ridiculous, ridiculous. seven hours. Seven hours. Yeah. Just seven hours. Because that seven <laughs> hours translates to loss of millions of dollars yeah. for pharmaceuticals. Yeah, it's, it's just sad. I think... You know, in California, there you can find holistic doctors yeah. everywhere. I mean, I was researching this past week, and I am so excited to try <laughs> some of the stuff, you know, just yeah. to try. Yeah. I think just educating yourself, yeah. researching, trying just to see. But I think there is going to be a, a revolution and an uprise for holistic doctors. No, absolutely. We, there was the one lady in the, the film who had had thyroid cancer, mm -hmm. and she was able to change her diet to get rid of the thyroid cancer. Mm -hmm. And so when you do that, it, of course there are people who are incentivized to not want that to happen. Mm -hmm. But our productivity goes up, we spend less money on hospitals and less money on that kind of care. So this is the kind of way we need to move, but what we're gonna see is that corporations mm -hmm. are gonna lose money along the way. Yeah. Can you explain to us what carcin carcinogens are? Uh, carcinogens are any compound that would promote cancer in the body. Okay. So there's a stat here that, um, and again, all the facts that we have, um, I'll put up a link, um, I guess, under our YouTube, and I'll send Shaka and myself, we'll put it on our social media, but you will see the research underneath if you want to dive deeper, if you think we're just throwing things out there. Yeah. But this says, um, the World Health Organization report has classified bacon and sausage as carcinogenic to humans. Now this, my yeah. friends, this was new to me. Like, I know they tell pregnant women not to eat deli meat, not to eat fish. That's new to me, too. Mm -hmm. We'll talk about that after. But to know that processed meat is very correlated to yeah. cancer risks yeah. and getting cancer up there with cigarette smoking. I can't even it's in the same I list. can't even count how many hot dogs I ate as a child. Like, that was a staple. We would drive to New York and go to Coney Island and yeah. have a hot dog. And, you know, even when you think you're eating turkey deli meat or yeah. chicken deli meat. It's still having the same effect. And we, we know that our, our largest uh, sodium intake comes from chicken. Chicken! Yeah. That was crazy to me. Our largest cholesterol? Chicken. So, yeah. everything I feel like that we've learned to eat the you know the less fat turkey and chicken and you know the leaner meats it's like those are just as dangerous and just because you see organic mm -hmm. on you know the packages that it doesn't mean it's, it's not going to affect your body because we know that the minute because people say okay moderation moderation and that was a great point in the uh, in the film was that Moderation doesn't work when it comes to this kind of stuff. It's sort of like saying, oh, I'll have a moderate amount of arsenic. No, there's, there's no good amount that's right. Yeah. The minute you eat meat, it starts an inflammatory response in the body. The very second it happens. Mm -hmm. So even though I've been vegan for a year and a half, the minute I eat meat, it's, it's going to start an inflammatory response in my body. Yeah. So it looks like we have a comment in the, in the chat room. <laughs> what do we got here? Yes. So let's talk cross-pollination versus genetically modified. Can we agree that there are some good benefits to genetically modified foods, for example, like apples, etc.? Okay, uh, so uh. after watching this documentary, um, I automatically thought, okay, what can we trust? Because we know we can't trust meat, yeah. but then we hear so much about 
GMOs and, you know, organic uh, fruits and vegetables versus, you know, um, cross-pollination. So basically that means in this country, we have taken like certain seeds and put them with other seeds to make our own type of uh, man-made fruits and vegetables. Yeah. For instance, corn, you know, if you went to Mexico um, many, many years ago, corn was originally like purple and blue and it wasn't until we cross-pollinated in the United States, it became yellow and now everybody's eating yellow corn. Sure. So that being said, Shaka, I know you're vegan yeah. and you are, you know, um, very picky about the yeah. foods that you eat. What is the difference? Is it just as bad or is it? Well, with genetically modified foods, we don't know exactly what the effect is on the food itself and how it's going to affect our body once we intake it. Um, a large amount of GMO foods are being fed to our animals. Mm -hmm. And so you're still getting those, even when you think you're having this organic meat or whatever, mm -hmm. you're still getting. Um, the p potential dangers of GMO foods. Mm -hmm. So it's something I completely avoid yeah. um, or I do my best to when I know what I'm eating, you know. Well, what about cross-pollination yeah. in terms of like, in the United States, the fruits and vegetables yeah. that are grown here, some of them are basically man-made. They might not have GMOs in it, but like, is yeah. that even safe for you? Um, in general, I, I find it to be safe, but again, you, you need to yeah. do some sort of testing to make sure you're not creating some sort of poisonous substance, yeah. but yeah. Well, well I, I think and I hope, and I'll have to maybe do more research into this, yeah. but just because you cross-pollinate, that's still natural. Yeah. The GMOs, they're not natural. So well, that's yeah. like putting, um, you know, peanut butter, natural peanut butter, and like homemade strawberry jam. You put it together, it's still natural. It's just gonna make, you know, a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. <laughs> Maybe that was a bad analogy. But what I'm saying is, if it's something natural and natural and yeah. you put it together, it doesn't mean that um, there's things in there that could harm you because it's coming from both natural resources. Yeah, with crop pollination, it's happening, it's happening naturally. When you're genetically modifying something, that gene that you're changing changes everything. And so we don't know the effect necessarily of changing everything. That, that changes the organism and mm -hmm. what it actually is. So. Yeah. I'll talk to Dr. Shamika about this too, and then we could kind of recap on next episode. But thank you for the question. That was a really, really good one. Um, okay. So let's talk about American Cancer yeah. Society encourages eating processed turkey and canned meat. So, so during the documentary, uh, while Kip was on the American Cancer Society website, after doing his own research, he realized that, you know, meat can cause cancer, but he found it very interesting that even the cancer website was promoting, you know, uh, turkey and processed meats that have carcinogens in them that cause cancer. Yeah, it was the same thing for American Diabetes Association. It was the same thing for the American Heart Association. And then we get the kicker at the end of it is that all their sponsors are these meat companies. So the same companies that were saying contribute to causing cancer, they're sponsoring the yeah. American Heart Association. Ameri you know, they're sponsoring these people that are supposed to be our best gatekeepers. Yeah, and that makes me really afraid because there's so much research out there that when you dig into that research, a lot of it is be, being funded by the backers. Yeah, the egg, the egg lobby, the dairy exactly. lobby. Exactly. Yeah. And it's just like, okay, just like um, if you remember Cranberries, uh, what was it, Ocean Spray? Yeah. They got outed saying that Ocean Spray uh, cranberry juice is really good for like UTIs and urinary urinary yeah. tract infections and um, yeast infections and um, it's a lie it has so much sugar yeah. and it's but they funded their own studies so and that and that's what they do and they spend hundreds of millions of dollars to do it and to do it in a way that you don't necessarily readily know or can see when you look at some of these studies yeah. so as far as diabetes one in three um, uh, people will have diabetes in the US uh, as far as cancer one um, out of every four deaths is caused from cancer. Yeah. So I found that very interesting that the numbers are so similar when it comes to diabetes and uh, the cause of death due to cancer. Yeah, I mean, these meats really promulgate um, these are cancerous cells. Mm -hmm. And once we remove them from the body, these cancer cells start to starve and die off. Mm -hmm. 
Seventy percent of deaths are uh, and more morbidity are largely lifestyle r related and preventable which was such a good thing that they highlighted because so many people oh this i, I have cancer in my family i'm not going to be able to outrun it exactly like, you know, there's a very yeah. small small percentage of you know it being in your family that it's going to happen to you yeah. five to ten percent i believe is like a, a, are, are genetically induced yeah and the sad thing is is that it's our behaviors that we learn from our family members. Yeah. You know, when you're making your mama's gumbo, or, you know, my family has a great recipe for steak and onions, and like yeah. those things, that's what's, you know, that's what we're really passing down in the family. And it's scary because they were saying by age of 10, kids have already um, fatty arteries by yeah. the age of 10. And I, I see it too with my nieces and nephews that are growing up. Not that we didn't see it when I was a child. However, I do believe that, you know, um, kids are not playing and they're not as active. So that means they're in the house On and the they're phone, eating more. Games, eating. Yeah, and especially, you know, um, in, you know, poor communities. I have one client who she told me, she does not want her child to go out and play because across the street at the park there's always gang members selling drugs and she does not want to expose her child to that. And she feels she's to blame because now her child is obese. And well, she's struggling at a very young age, but she would rather have her in the house than outside in that neighborhood. Which and, is fine because we got to know it's the food though that you're making because yeah. it, in fact the fact that she's inside all the time she Doesn't should mean, be even healthier. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Well, maybe not healthier but... Well, if, you're, if you're feeding her the exactly, right foods, yeah, exactly. she'll, she'll be even healthier. Yeah. yeah, if it's feeding her the right foods that yeah, that will do that. Um, so yeah, what you were saying, the, the fatty liver streaks in kids, but you usually don't see fatty livers or fatty streaks in livers until what age? Maybe 40s, 50s? Yeah. I forget the exact age. But, now but it's 10 years old. Yeah. You're getting already fatty streaks in the arteries for kids. In the next 25 years, one out of every three Americans will have diabetes. Um, one which, third yeah, of Americans. That's, that's huge. That's very huge. Yeah. Um, diabetes is not, a, is not caused by eating what we said earlier, the carbohydrates or a high sugar diet. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the worst is if a child gets diabetes, it, it cuts oh. their life expectancy down by 19 years. Yeah, that to me is crazy yeah. because I wonder what's the lifespan uh, when you get onset adult diabetes. Yeah. But we know juvenile diabetes is on the rise as well, you know? One serving of processed meat per day increased risk of developing diabetes by 51%. That blew me away right there. Yeah. One 51%. serving of meat per day. Mm -hmm. And most Americans are probably having two, three, four servings. I mean, I was taught to have meat with every meal. Yeah. So another thing in the documentary that I found interesting too, one of the doctors, he was saying that um, a paleo diet or paleo yeah. diet. <laughs> paleo. Uh, uh, paleo. <laughs> a paleo diet, which is, you know, really known against CrossFitters or people who are trying to stay away from carbs. He was explaining in the documentary that they're, I mean, look at this right here. I mean, if yeah. they're meat heavy, they are just doing so much damage to their mm -hmm. organs and really, you know, it's going to affect their lifespan. But I think because this is so new right now, I don't think there's a lot of um, literature or reports out there, stats that we can see to really see what it's doing. Yeah, absolutely. And we got another uh, comment from Sarah. Was it, would it be safe to intake large quantities of fruit? Are these types of sugars, fructose, better or indifferent to normal sugar? If so, when juicing, would it be better to juice green veggies more than fruit? Um, my personal take on that is that sugar that comes naturally from fruits um, or, or any other natural source is good for you and fine for you. Yeah. Um, if you're, but again, if your sugar intake is somehow affecting 
um, yourself calorically, yeah. then you're gonna watch your calories. Yeah. But the actual sugar intake from fruits or, or juicing veggies, I think it's fine. Yeah. You're gonna wanna make sure you get a full profile of veggies and fruit anyways, just yeah. to get your vitamins and minerals. Yeah, and Sarah, um, the body is able to break down natural sugar so much quicker and faster than it is processed sugar. And if you're worried about sugar intake, what I would suggest is after a workout, that's probably the time when you wanna eat the sugar because it will feed your muscles and go to the right places quickly after your workout. So if you wanna eat the fruits and you're a little concerned, you know, do it after a workout. Cool. All right. Um, American Diabetes Association features recipes for red and processed meat. And yeah. this is something that we talked about earlier. Again, they I just mean, all every, are... even I was surprised too um, with, you know, the pink ribbon, the cancer um, yeah. associate breast cancer awareness and that association. You know, dairy has been founded to really affect um, breast, cancer. breast cancer in women. And, you know, we've seen yogurts with, you know, pink ribbons on them. So it's very scary that they would even promote eating dairy. And again, who are their sponsors? YoPlay. Yes. So. Over 17 million people die every year from cardiovascular disease. I mean, I can tell you two, no, three family members of mine, two aunts, and one uncle in the last three years have had um, a heart attack. Maybe not have died, but yeah. it's... It, it's scary, and, it, and it's really because of the way we're being taught to eat, and, and we're being told and sold things as healthy. So it's not even, uh, what, what chance do we have when you're telling us this is a healthy way to go? Within minutes of eating dead meat, bacteria toxins, the body gets a burst of inflammation, stiffening or paralyzing the arteries. Yeah. Um, you touched on it earlier, but I really feel like, especially this information, letting us know exactly what it's doing inside of our bodies is really going to have people second guess. Yeah. You know, and that's not just like, oh, you've been eating meat all your life or so much pounds a day. So that's no, just a little bit mm -hmm. <laughs> that starts the process off. American Cancer Society recommends fish and poultry. Um, the fish thing, that was very new to me. Can you explain kind of yeah, I mean, uh, the the information that we learned about fish? Because, I mean, I always thought fish was, you know, oh, better than safer, being meat eating. I thought it was one of the safer sort of foods. But again, um, fish, ha there are tons of chemicals. they got PCBs. Um, they're filled with different uh, hormonal chemicals that are lodged in their fat mm -hmm. uh, and mercury. And so, and all of this affects us. And mm -hmm. so when you're eating fish, it doesn't matter if it's a fatty fish or if it's like, I, I think we're all often told avoid catfish, it's a little bit more fatty. Um, mm -hmm. Avoid tuna, that tends to be more mercury heavy. But all, all fish contain these um, yeah. chemicals that really harm our bodies. And as you're talking about this, the images in my mind from, um, you, could, you could see the farmed fish. Yeah. It was just like, yeah, and it's no safer. The farm fish is no safer than the wild caught stuff. And they're all exposed. Yeah, and they're just all like together. And it's yeah. not like I went to the Dominican Republic uh, in March and um, we had dinner on the beach and we had lobster. I'll tell you, I have never had lobster like that here in the States. And I know because, not saying it's great for lobster, you, yeah. not That's saying so it's great. great for you, but. I think here in the States, it's just mass production. Yeah. And the quality of food has gone down so much. And I feel like this really has heightened all the issues that we are having now with the food. It's because it's not, I mean, you even saw the part of the documentary where the the de the pigs that died, oh, they, they and this would, was graphic, ooh, yeah. the pigs that died from illnesses and bacteria and viruses, they would just shred it up and refeed it back to the other fig pigs to eat. Yeah. And then we're eating those pigs, and it was just, it was out of this world. <laughs> hey, wait, so, but, but next time you go to the DR and they offer you that succulent lobster, yeah, it's I a don't. no. I mean, I'll be honest. I went oh, vegan. I, I went vegan for a couple of months, and I did really, I didn't even think I would last a couple of days. Yeah. Since then, I had one on vacation, and I had a little bit of fish, a little here and there. But, I mean, this thing, whoo, yeah. watching this documentary kind of like woke me back yeah. up. You know, I kind of feel like like fitness. Yeah. You know, you fall off, and then you get back on, and yeah. then finally you kind of get a routine. So um, I'm not perfect, and I know I'm giving you all the facts, and I'm, I'm telling you, you know, vegan is the way to go. 
I'm not 100% vegan, but I'll tell you. What's keeping you from going 100% vegan after this documentary? <laughs> <laughs> what, what could possibly be keeping you? You know, um, not that I'm not going to, but I feel like it's just, you know, everybody gets comfortable. Yeah. Everybody's used to cooking, so it's getting out of that routine. But, you know, even going to the supermarket this week, I made sure that I gave myself options so I wouldn't fail. Yeah. You know, I made sure, okay, I'm going to buy tofurkey, which is, you know, <laughs> yeah. fake turkey, but the peppered one is amazing. <laughs> My Just Mayo, yeah. um, these are like product shout outs, so if you uh, want to sponsor us. <laughs> um, the Chipotle one was amazing. Um, I got some Daya cheese yeah, and, yeah. Um, you know, tempeh bacon. So I think for me, it's finding alternatives yeah. to help me replace my meat yeah. that I think will help me transition completely. Yeah. You know, even eggs. Um, one of the shocking stats about eggs, yeah. eating one egg per day is just as bad as smoking five cigarettes per day for life expectancy. This blew me away because, yeah. you know, I maybe you could say I'm like a vegetarian, pescatarian. Eggs are like my jam. Yeah. I <laughs> love eggs. And to see those stats, five cigarettes per day. Yeah, I mean, for me, eggs were my big thing, too, because I, I would eat egg whites all the time, all the time. So it was a tougher thing to get away from. Yeah. But your health. So what are you having as a substitute? I never really found a substitute yeah. for egg whites. Um, I have egg replacers, so if I want to bake something, I yeah. can use that in there. But I never found a substitute for egg whites, but I was fine not to have one. Yeah. At the end of the day, it was just like health. <laughs> I mean, this just makes me look at food so differently. Yeah. I mean, it, food, like, what it started off food design medicine, you know, that, yeah. that whole deal. And it really is our medicine. It's how we heal. It's how we grow. Yeah. And if we're, doing, if we're putting the wrong things in our body, like dairy, mm -hmm. which... We know it's cow. It, it's a formula for a cow. It's designed to grow a cow from a little, little bitty thing mm -hmm. to this huge, several hundred pound yeah. animal in a very short amount of time, yeah. and we're having it. And I, I think one of the stats was the casein. So that we know how bad the casein affects our bodies. And in human milk, there's about 2.7 grams of casein per liter. Mm -hmm. In cow's milk, it's 27 grams, and we're drinking this stuff. So it, it <laughs> this <laughs> blows me away. All. The information um, and the number one source of saturated fat is dairy. Yeah. So I know you told me this before. Yeah, if we you are on, um, you know, your way to trying to kind of getting your foot in the water of becoming healthier and living uh, this type of lifestyle, the first thing you should give up is dairy. Yeah. And then we got another little comment here. Um, do you mind if Brandt, y'all think there's any connection between population control? We now learn from. Mm, so this was an interesting um, topic. So uh, for those of you that can't see it, there was a, uh, they, they talked about oh, yeah. how they put some of these um, pig farms that are really toxic towards the community and really lower income communities, which disproportionately affect minorities. And so is this not just a food issue, but really a civil rights issue? Uh, for me, I believe so. Um, whenever you're disproportionately affecting a group of people, low income minorities, and doing so in a way that does not protect their health and they're getting sick every day because of it, mm -hmm. then of course it's a civil rights mm -hmm. issue. Um, I had put the post uh, last night that caused a lot of um, commentary uh, <laughs> as I was trying to <coughs> you know, announce that we're going to be covering uh, this documentary today on the show. But it says the U.S. government is encouraging Americans of color to eat foods that it knows is going to make them ill so that it will benefit the dairy farmers. Yeah. And one guy commented, let me read it to you if I can find it. There was just so <coughs> many... Um, let's see, they were going back and forth. Let's see, it's from Real Oliver Twist. <laughs> um, and he said, or did he delete it? Someone delete it? But basically, um, to go along with what I had posted that, this is why you wouldn't see Whole Foods in Compton. And, you know, he had gotten some backlash saying it's, it's not because of that, it's because of the violence. But, you know, as we do the statistics, and not just Compton, but in many, many areas, I mean, you know, when I'm back home, if I go to Boston, 
You know, I can find a McDonald's, a Burger King on every street corner. Mm -hmm. um, so it's not just here in Compton where there's not saying that there's not violence in other places. But I also do believe that when you have a impoverished area, people will do things that might cause, you know, more violence. But I think it's it's more than that. It's it is more than that. It's, you're being targeted. <coughs> We know minorities already get a lesser standard of health care mm -hmm. from um, the industry. Um, we know that we have, we're have we screened later for different cancers, we're treated later for different cancers. Mm -hmm. And so it goes part and parcel with that. The fact that we're told to eat certain foods and we're not being educated about what is healthy and that you can't find a Whole Foods in certain areas that are um, low income or, mm -hmm. well, to a degree it makes sense that you might have a Whole Foods that's not in a low income area, but there's not even low, there's not either other alternatives to that. A Trader Joe's yeah. or Sprouts. Or, or even people who, you know, are on food stamps. It's not until recently that you have access to vegetables. Yeah, and you can't. You don't even have access. Like, you are on food stamps mm -hmm. and you have to buy canned and, processed, and foods. processed foods. Yeah. So, this shows you right there, there is, you know, to some degree, you know, what people were saying in the documentary, institutionalized racism. And again, there's still that fight to not allowing people to use food stamps online. Because if they could actually use them online and order their groceries and get those delivered, yeah. it becomes a lot easier to get a hold of healthy food, yeah. especially if you're in like a food desert situation. Mm -hmm. And kind of like what we talked about last week, um, the company where you can get fresh food yeah. sent to your home. Yeah. So being able to use that with food stamps would be amazing. Yeah. So. Um, the main study that started the saturated fat media craze. Um, you know, fat is a, an interesting thing because there are good fats and there are bad fats. Yeah. But I think, too, the problem with meat is it's, I mean, avocados are fat. You can eat avocados and won't get fat. Yeah. I mean, I eat, when I was even doing my fit to fat journey where I was losing a bunch of weight, avocados were like my bestie <laughs> but it's the you know unhealthy fat in the meats yeah. um, or even in the butter or yeah. in the dairy yeah. that is going to be unhealthy for you what do you think about bulletproof coffee because they put, they put butter that, in that there do you butter? drink that Without the butter. Okay. Um, yeah, I like their coffee. Uh, I've had their MCT oil. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, I do obviously do it without the butter. So mm -hmm. I, I do like it in the MCT oil effects. Mm -hmm. so. Okay. Um, the egg industry funds studies that confuse consumers. I mean... Well, I mean, because it's eggs, the, the meat, the dairy. Mm -hmm. it's, it's more than just the egg industry. Because the idea is if I put doubt in someone's mind, mm -hmm. it allows them to take the choice that they really want to take mm -hmm. at the end of the day. You know, we've all been conditioned to like these foods. So they don't need to worry about whether or not we have an emotional connection. They know that's already there. So the question is, when these people become adults and get a little bit aware of what they're putting to their bodies, how do we keep them by providing a little doubt? Because if I think, well, I'm not really sure if it's unhealthy, I'm mm -hmm. going to have it anyways. And that's how they, they stay in business. Oh, yeah. And a lot of um, the lawyers that are backing um, these big food uh, companies are the same lawyers that represented the tobacco industry. Yeah, they're well And <laughs> one of the doctors on the doc documentary, he had explained that, you know, at some point they knew that cigarettes were so toxic that they had to put the general surgeon warning label on it. Why is there not a label on meat products with the same warning letting us know how you know, bad it really is for us? I mean, they've done a better job at their PR campaign. Really, at the end of the day, they, the fact that this, they are sponsors of the American Heart Association, what else can you do? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And it surprises me, too, that lobbyists and uh, vegan activists, um, the jail time that some of them will face for, I think there were, what was it, the the meat, the cheeseburger law or oh, something yeah, like yeah. that, you know, um, they have all these different laws to protect them Whether from... Whether it's whistleblowing, yeah, they have all these laws that protect even whistleblowers of the meat industry, people from taking pictures of what they're doing and, you know, and, and divulging that to the public. They have all these laws designed to protect them. Yeah. To me, you know, I feel like there are people out there who are doing, you know, you know, m more harmful crimes or committing other things that are not, you know, trying to educate people about what's really going on about their health. And it, to me, it's sad to see that these people are, you know, 
getting, I guess, the short end of the stick. You know, yeah. they're being punished for telling the truth. Yeah, it's ridiculous. But if you want to protect an industry, that's how you do it. Yeah. Even here, one of my uh, co-workers, um, she says that her and a couple friends, they will go down uh, to one of the farms. And as they're taking off the cows, uh, the baby cows and the pigs, they will sing to them yeah. as they get shipped off to kind of, I know this is kind of crazy, but <laughs> but they will sing to them as they get shipped off to kind of like calm them down and- Before they slaughter. Before they slaughter them so they're not in fear. Yeah. Because, and you see it too um, with posts on social media where you'll see a dog and a cat on one end and other animals that we eat on the other end. And it's like, okay, where do we draw the line? Yeah. One's pet and one is food. So yeah. what do you think of that? Because I know you're a vegan, yeah. but what were their true reasons why you turned to veganism? I mean, it was, for, it was for the health of the body. And then I found out a little bit more about what it does for the planet and mm -hmm. what it does for animals and the way the animals are treated. Um, it, it, it's awful. We, we already know what North Carolina, they almost have as many hogs as they have people. Yeah, it's and nuts. They, they have 10 million hogs produce the waste that's equivalent to 100 million people. It's crazy. And so, and they're using that waste and re putting it back in the lakes and streams and respraying it back on crops mm -hmm. to, to somehow grow them for our consumption, you know? Mm -hmm. And so it, it, it's, it's just a really bad situation all around and I don't know why we make these distinctions. So again, I did do it for health, but knowing that I'm helping the animal community and helping the earth are really great pluses yeah. in my book. My father grew up on a, on a farm in the Dominican Republic okay. and you know he he would kind of share with me um, how they raised their animals and he explained that they actually had a long healthy life and you know after they've lived a good life that's when yeah. you know they they had to kill them for food. Yeah. Um, I don't have as much of a problem with that than what we're doing now. I feel like yeah, yeah. it's it's very brutal where we're at now. It's yeah. different if we n knew that they lived a life where they have space to run, they're being cared for, they're not being injected with yeah. a bunch of different, I mean the pharmaceutical company injects um, the animals that people eat with, what was it, like 450 four, drugs. 450 different drugs yeah. are being pumped into the animals that are being sold to eat. 80% of the um, antibiotics we make goes to animals, 80%. And, and I was sitting next to a surgeon on a plane. Um, he was a cardiovascular surgeon and he told me too that the highest strain of form of antibiotics are being sold to farmers all, yeah. all over the country. And now that we're getting it through our meat products, we're finding we're having a lot of antibiotic resistance in different communities. Mm -hmm. and, a lot of people are dying. Okay. And now as a result, when you get that next thing and you need that penicillin to really work, it may not work. You might find you have an antibiotic resistant version of whatever it is you're trying to get cured. It just makes you scared that if you get sick, there might be no cure for you. You yeah. might, you know, a cold, a flu, something simple yeah. because of all the mm. different food products you ate and the, the drugs and yep. antibiotics we're putting in our system through the meat. Yeah. Okay, guys, um, we are almost out of time. I think it's, do we have one more question in there? I can't even see. Uh, um, I can't. No. It's kind of far. No, okay. So, takeaway, will you um, be showing all your non-vegan friends this? Because I, I went online and I like to read or, or watch um, things that debunk some of the documentaries just to see both sides of it. And I think the biggest problem with this is some people feel that, um, you know, it's the spread of the vegan virus. Like we're trying to shock America to, to turn them well, into vegans, almost like a cult. Yeah, I mean, no one wants like we have all of us have a very deep and personal relationship with food yeah. and if you feel like that deep and personal relationship is being attacked you're gonna you're gonna fight back it's sort of like if someone said something bad about your girlfriend or boyfriend you'd you'd be like hey hey wait a minute even if it was true you'd be like whoa, whoa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and I think that's where we are right now if people have this relationship with food and hearing that that relationship might have been messed up the, their entire life and they have yeah. to change something now 
it gets people scared. Yeah. And so I tell my friends, like, as if it was just any other Netflix show that you know I'm passionate about, hey, go ahead and check this out. If you do, great. If you don't, no problem. If you want to talk about it, let me know. <laughs> yeah. I love that. And I think you know um, the creator of this documentary, Kip, I feel like that's exactly what happened to him. Yeah. And um, you know, I think it's slowly opening up all of our eyes who do watch it. If you haven't watched it, please, you know, like Shaka said, you do not have to. It, it's it's almost like you know church. You know, yeah, if you yeah. go to church and yeah. you know if you feel the spirit, yeah. let it move you. And if it doesn't, that's okay. And sometimes you, you walk out of church and you still live wrong. Exactly. But whatever. You yeah. still went. You yeah. got there. You got the information. <laughs> All right, you guys. Thanks for tuning in, and um, I cannot wait to read the comments because we will be replying back. And um, I'm definitely going to try to reach out to some of the doctors that yeah. were in this documentary, yeah. maybe even Kip, Kip who knows, yeah, Kip because it would be, um, it, I love hearing the backstory yeah. of, you know, what really went into this, you know, him talking about on air or on the show, how many people turned him down, what interviews did we not see? Yeah, and, that, and how did he vet his own studies, because, you know, we look at certain studies, they're, you know, put out by this group and that group, so were your studies clean mm -hmm. studies essentially too. So. Yeah, and I think that's some of the criticism with this is some of the studies were specifically just so only to support, you know, yeah. what they're trying to prove, but I feel like that's with everything. Yeah, but you do you want to make sure we get that balance. Yeah. 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 Okay, you guys, thanks for tuning in. Um, this is a good one. I'm yeah. all like riled up. I know I need a second hour. <laughs> <laughs> all right, you guys, you can find me online at fitwithfallon.com or at fitwithfallon on social media. Shaka, where can they find you? You guys can find me at Shaka Strong on Twitter, Instagram, and Snapchat. All right, I'm going to go home and eat some vegetables. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Have a good guy day, you guys. Bye Take guys. care. From executives Kevin Undergaro, Dario Christian, Tiana Hobson, and the entire BHL staff, we would like to thank you for supporting Black Hollywood Live, the first online broadcast network dedicated to African American entertainment. For questions and comments, contact us. Info at blackhollywoodlive.com. Like us on Facebook. Tweet us or Instagram us at BHL Online. And I am the official voice of Black Hollywood Live. Scipio, Instagram at KingXOBay. Thanks for tuning in. Hollywood Redefined. The views expressed here are those of the host owner and do not necessarily reflect the views of BHL or its owners or principals.